it started off with a lot of confidence and then it went boom. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am here today to talk about how I did not do well in my technical interview. And I am here to share these golden nuggets with you that I've learned in the past few years. And then looking back what I would do different in hopes that you are prepared and successful for your next technical interview. So if you are new here, welcome to the channel. I talk about career content related to the tech industry, mostly in focus within the Salesforce space. So if you do like that type of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. So I hope you have your tea. I hope you have your notebook ready because these tips are going to be really helpful for you moving forward into your first technical interview. But before that, if you don't know what a technical interview is let's talk about that really quick because it's gonna be really important to understand now you have a different type of interview which is your formal interview tell us about you what are your future goals what type of experience have you had in this tech industry I'm gonna to talk to Salesforce right now what type of cloud computings have you worked with what type of clients have you worked with industries questions like that now when it comes to your technical interview this is going to be more of that demonstrate what you know, how you deliver, how you architect the framework, how you are going to help a client at the end of the day. You're being tested on your technical abilities, but not only your technical abilities, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk into that in the upcoming tips that I have for you. What happened, because I know you all are probably clicking into this video to hear what happened in my technical interview. So basically, a few years ago, I had left my company and I was looking for a new job. Ooh, and let me tell you, I interviewed at like 15 places where five of them probably had technical interviews. So I've been there, I have bombed some, I have done some and what good at some, but after all, look at that time looking back, I can definitely say these golden nuggets are gonna help you. So what happened in my interview? It was basically that I did not do my best. I did not present the way that I should have. I definitely left out some clues. I didn't ask for help. I didn't ask for a certain more explanation into certain areas of the projects. There's just a lot of things where it started off with a lot of confidence and then it went boom. So I'm here in hopes that these tips can help you because I know looking back, I could have done a lot better. So I have five tips for you today. Let's go ahead and dive into them. The first and most important tip is when you initially get your assignment that you have to do, it's going to be really important that you take time to really understand the business problem that they're asking you to solve. One thing that I did was I kind of read through it and then based on my knowledge, I was like, okay, I know what they need, I'll just write it down. Instead, what I could have done is kind of go section through section saying, okay, they're implementing Salesforce. I need to think about what type of implementation things would be helpful for the users. They are also implementing sales and service. I need to understand the sales side, I need to understand the service side. And I also need to figure out how to train users. How do I do that? How do I make Salesforce engaging? How do I make it fun for them? And then lastly, I also needed to touch on the piece that they're trying to get new people onto their website and I needed to integrate it with Salesforce. So I needed to think of a feature at that time that would be fun and exciting for the users to have, but also for people going to this veterinary's website to be able to put in. So that's a thought process that I should have had instead of saying, okay, I know what needs to get done and I'm just gonna do it. I believe that having a very documented, detailed process of their business case would have been a lot more helpful for not only me to understand, but for my deliverance when I was done the project and I was actually in that technical interview piece. So going back, take time to understand the problem. Ask questions if there are things that you need to know. Do not worry about bothering the project manager or the hiring manager at that point. Be considerate, but also make sure that you're asking the questions that you need because that shows the hiring manager that you're asking, you care about the client, you want to know what to do, you're doing your job well. That's another piece that I was a little nervous about doing. I had questions and I didn't necessarily ask. So make sure you're putting yourself in the best spot by asking those questions, by doing a deep dive 
into the assignment that you're given. That will definitely help you. Now, the next tip that I want to share is that you're being judged on your technical skills but also how you deliver. And this is really important because you're gonna be brought onto a team. You're gonna be representing the projects. You're gonna be representing this association, this company now. You are the face of the company. So it's going to be really important for you to be able to have the solving problems behind. How are you solving things? How do you break down different components that need to be broken down to be able to share with your audience? How do you arrive at a solution? How do you react when something doesn't work? Are you better when you come to explaining things? These are all things that a project manager and a hiring manager really do consider. So explaining what's happening in your head as you solve the problem and being able to deliver that and explain this is why I built this to be able to help you in your day. So the way that I think about it now, looking back, I believe I could have said, okay, I'm creating this form on your website so when new patients come that are interested in having their little doggy or cat go into your vet, they're able to give specific information that is really important and relevant to what that specific veterinary does. So not only does it help the person filling out this form say like, oh, they really care about my pet. I know for sure I'm gonna pick this veterinary out of all the veterinaries that we have. And then on the user side, who essentially receives that document in that form, it's also going to help them see specific things that their client needs. So it's a win-win situation. By being able to understand that how you're delivering and putting the people first, who are gonna be working in that nine to five situation where they're using the things that you created for them, that's gonna be really important. And hiring managers are really gonna appreciate the thought behind things. So make sure that you're not just thinking about the technical skills that you're creating, but you're also putting that human to human focus when you're ending up delivering your project or your assignment. So tip number three is going to be practice. And I know this assignment might sound silly, but I could have benefited from practicing a lot more, whether that be with my significant other, be with a family member, a friend. I just needed somebody to listen because majority of the time when we're thinking, we're thinking how we want it to be delivered, how we're thinking. We're not thinking about how others are understanding our ideas, our concepts, our points. If they're not us explaining it, it's going to be really hard for them to be able to understand those concepts. So what I would suggest if you are having a technical interview is to find somebody who can listen to you. If they don't understand the things that you're telling them, let's say if they don't understand Salesforce, they're not a coder, if they're not in that technical industry, that's totally okay. Because going back to tip number two, you're not only being judged on your technical skills, you're also being judged on how you deliver. Can you carry your point across? Because majority of the time, for my technical people out there, we're delivering to people who are not tech professionals. So it's really important for us to be able to practice with people and they understand our point, our solution, the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. So hopefully you end up practicing with a colleague, friend, family member, spouse, whoever it may be. Make sure to keep practicing and practicing again so your point is clear and the client essentially who's understanding and listening to you can clearly see what you're trying to get across. So tip number four is going to be going above expectations. And when you're in a technical interview, it's really important for you to stand out from other candidates, that you're not only capable of meeting the requirements of the assignment, but that you're also thinking about the bigger picture and really how your solution can benefit the company or the client at the end of the day. What are you doing that is making the customer happy? What are you doing that is also making your client happy? These are ways and tasks that you could help them save time, for example. Are you creating solutions that will help them in their day? That's going above and beyond. These extra considerations can really not only help you be remembered in the interview, but it also can show the person that you are. I know looking back, a lot of us can be taught the technical skills, but it's that human to human understanding, concentration, focus, delivering, that is not always there with a candidate. So if you're able to say, I really wanna make my 
client, my client happy, <laughs> right? That delivers when you're like talking to hiring managers, when you're working with people, and that would just ultimately show who you are as a person. And that will carry so much value into your interview. Tip number five, and this is going to be really important because as a technical individual, it's going to be very, very, very important to be mindful of your tone and your vibe that you're giving off. Are you having a good demeanor during the call? Is the person going to be actively engaged listen to you? While it's very important to equally show your technical skills, being able to show your confidence and your competence is going to be very important so people can understand that this is the type of person that I would be working with for so and so years moving forward. Again, remember that you're really representing the organization. So by projecting not only positive and that upbeat attitude, um, it can go really a long way. So make sure when you are in these technical interviews that you're not only demonstrating your technical abilities, but also showcasing your abilities to work well with others. I think I was so focused and it's totally normal. When I was giving my interview is, am I doing this right? Is my technical side right? Is my this right remember that if you are a newer candidate coming into an industry you're going to learn these things over time and if you have an organization that's going to be there to mentor you you're definitely going to learn that too so always make sure that your deliverance is strong that you are being mindful of your tone are you exciting the potential client that is going to be using your features and your technical ideas that you create in the future are they going to be happy about it that is my final tip for you. I hope that these golden nuggets were extremely helpful because I wish I had these when I was going through my interview. Looking back, I've had a lot of experience since and I feel very confident that these tips will be able to help you in your interview. All right, let's go ahead and recap on those five tips. The first, it's take time to understand the problem. Ask if you have any questions because if you don't ask those questions, they're gonna assume that you know what you're doing and if you don't, you gotta ask. Always make sure to ask. That's probably my biggest tip for this. The second thing that we wanted to cover was remember that you're not being judged solely on those technical skills even though it's a technical interview you have to think about you're gonna be working with this company in the future they want to see how you deliver how you communicate and if you were able to solve the problem that this client was asking for in the first place so remember you're also being judged on your deliverance not just your technical skills the third tip was practice 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 Talk to friends, talk to somebody who's non-technical especially because you want to make sure that the person who is going to be receiving your updates that you're doing for the org, specifically to Salesforce people, you need to make sure that they're understanding what you're trying to say so they can say, yeah, I want that feature. I want that update. Let's go for it. I'm excited. Always remember, go above expectations if you can. Make sure that you're also conveying that in the interview so the manager or the hiring manager can hear ultimately why you did something why do you want this to be better for a client be mindful of your tone your interviewers are really looking for someone who can collaborate efficiently work together with other individuals and how you're going to be speaking to clients so again I hope that these tips were helpful if they were go ahead and leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more career content like this and I will see you all in the next video bye